As you probably know, on the wallyanalog.com website, we've got all of our instructional and educational videos. The number of videos so far on our website is somewhere around 100 or more. I understand that it can be daunting looking at all that and determining, well, which should I pay attention to first? So I wanted to talk a little bit about what I see as perhaps the most important videos that we've done to date areas where I would want to make sure that if people just had a limited amount of time that they at least paid attention to the following videos. About a year ago we did a series of videos entitled The 7 Alignment Targets of Analog Optimization. I would encourage everybody to watch that series of 7 videos uh, so you can understand what's at stake for us. Uh, what is the opportunity, perhaps missed, perhaps achieved, and how we know what those targets are and how we know whether we've hit them or not. Very foundational to what we do, to check those out. There's several videos in this Soundbite series of videos that I would have you see. Certainly video number 32. In Soundbite 32 I go over what is really a foundational concept for mechanical transcription, for faithfulness in mechanical transcription. Understanding that is key to understanding a lot of what follows. Comments that I would otherwise make on rigidity and mass. Very important. Watch that one. There are two sub-series in the Soundbite video compendium. One on skating force and another one on uh, tone arm cartridge compliance. Both of those I think are worth watching. In all of these cases, I believe, with these, these videos I'm, uh, that I'm mentioning here, I'm in, in, many, in most of these cases, I'm butting up against much conventional wisdom. And I freely admit that in some of these points that I am sharing in these videos, I am very much a lone voice in these things. Um, good arguments against my position, I'm ready to hear. So far, um, I'm not aware of any arguments that um, would have me have to reconsider my position, which I'm fully prepared to do. In the face of evidence, I'm ready to change my mind. Sh shared that with you in the video on SRA as part of the seven alignment targets of analog optimization, where I freely admitted that I once thought rake angle was quite important and I no longer do. Same thing in the Skating Force series we talked about. I used to think that we would have to apply a different anti-skate force depending on arm length and now I know that is not true either. So I don't mind changing my position. Uh, I'm only interested in advancing our ability to get more out of the groove. That's it. So I would say start with those videos if you really want to get at what I believe are the most important points, the ideas that we're trying to get across. There are many topics that we won't be covering and certainly not in the Soundbite series of videos because the complexity is too great or the amount of visual aids I'd have to create in order to um, convey the concepts across well require too much of my time or maybe even some skills that I don't have and I'd have to farm out. There are many topics left uncovered. However, I'd like to hear from you. Are there any topics that I haven't covered that you'd like me to cover? Please say so. Um, and I, I will do my best to, to cover uh, any good ideas I see laid forth. There have been some ideas people have shared with me in the past that have ended up being a video here in this Soundbite series. One topic I would really like to get into more deeply is, well, and I've mentioned this in another soundbite video, that as audiophiles we're really good at identifying when we hear something that we don't like, but we're really bad at identifying why we don't like it. We tend to ascribe the reasoning to a wrong thing. This is all about controlling variables. When we are when we set for ourselves 
the task to decide whether we like A or B. We're really not good at, and I'm including myself at this, I try really hard, um, to control the variables that would influence the test. This is a subject I think merits a, a long, long discussion, maybe even a book, and the confusion that does arise out of coming to conclusions about why something sounds a particular way has, has well, it has created opportunities for people who are engineers or sci scientific minded people and are not audiophiles to look at what we do with some incredulity. Look at us as perhaps crackpots because we come to conclusions based on what we rightly hear we come to the wrong conclusions. And I think the industry as a whole is, is at fault with this. And if we take more time and better understand how to control the variables, then we can understand the contribution of each of those variables. And then we can better direct our efforts to creating higher quality components, setups, um, whatnot. There it is. Another week of Soundbite. See you next week.